And so now here we start to get into uh, kind of back to the uh, to the, the 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 physical world again. So we we've just looked at the, the manipulations of the image itself. Uh, so next thing we needed to think about was how do we um, how do we visualize this image on these panels uh, by punching holes in the panels, knowing that we're going to have to work with uh, either an open uh, uh, you know a punch a hole or a field of just the material itself. And so. Um, juggling that against the criteria that we have for the uh, the triangles, um, we needed to determine what's the best procedure to lay out the perforations and, and how will those uh, how, how will those be aligned. So you can see we're kind of studying here from the left to right. We start with just kind of an orthogonal alignment, um, but what you see there is we get kind of this uh, this stepped edge. So these staggered edges uh, don't really align to the panel very well. Uh, in the middle, we use a diagonal grid that was kind of based off of one edge, and so uh, one edge becomes fairly clean, but the other still has the stair step effect. Um, in the end, or at least where we are now, what we went to is we kind of subdivided the grid. Uh, so we took that triangle and we, we used a series of subdivisions so that we could align the perforations to every edge. So we got a nice mm -hmm. clean edge and, and, a nice, uh, and a nice spacing between the perforation. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Uh, that ultimately probably means that the uh, all the the hole sizes are maybe they're different or the the spacing between them is is slightly different in order to make that all sort of shake out and line up on the sides. That's exactly what, what we're visualizing here. We're using a, a single um, perforation hole size, okay. uh, really to kind of understand what the largest hole we're using. Can we maintain that half inch spacing, and we can can we kind of see where our center points are going to be, so that we know as we manipulate that that uh, diameter of the hole size, they're still going to fall within this grid. Okay. Okay. And then moving ahead, um, we're looking at perforation density next, and so um, as you can imagine. Uh, in order to, to show this image, we need to kind of fine tune the density of the perforations uh, with the image map itself uh, at the actual size that it's going to be so that we, we know that on one hand, if we have uh, too much density, um, it's going to give us one look. Uh, if we take that to the extreme and we, we make this uh, uh, as few of perforations as possible, it may not give us enough uh, enough fidelity to work with in terms of, uh, of the image itself. So you're seeing here from left to right uh, just uh, an increase in density of these perforations laid out on the, uh, the subdivided grid. Okay. Uh, next, we we use the noise multiplier uh, procedural, and so this is uh, kind of a you know a noise algorithm like you might have in uh, in different uh, photo editing software that we just ran through our our uh, Visual Studio. Um, but what this is allowing us to do is uh, again to just look at different iterations of how we abstract uh, the image itself. And so what we're after here is we're trying to balance the amount of fall off or or the uh, the gradient that we see between the pure image and then applying this noise multiplier, we start to get a little more of the kind of the pixelated snowflake effect that you see on the uh, the upper right image. Mm -hmm. And this is important because it allows us to kind of balance uh, the, the solid and the void in a way that remains interesting at multiple scales. And so as you're flying over the stadium, you're going to read it at a, at a very far distance as you're driving up to it uh, versus when you're walking around in the plaza or you actually walk up into the stadium and reach out and kind of touch the surface. We want it to be visually interesting and engaging at, at each distance. Uh, mm -hmm. And so down below. Heath, let me ask you actually, so uh, just to sort of zoom out to 10,000 feet again, what you guys are doing here is, is these studies here on, uh, on how to handle the edge, um, the density, and then also now about the noise um, multiplier, you're, you're applying or you're sort of driving these iterations and these studies, uh, not through Grasshopper necessarily, but you're, you're, you're running them through the, the software that you guys developed yourself. Is that right? That, that's, that's correct. And, and, and what that software is essentially doing is it's, it's allowing us to use other software such as Photoshop um, to apply these procedures. Uh, some of the procedures are applied with the, with the, you know, the kind of the custom, I don't know if we'd call it an application per se, because we haven't, uh, we haven't developed a UI that we would release this, but it's something that we can work with, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but this allows us to just handle knowing that for each of these that we're doing, um, we're going to need to do 75,000 of them. 
mm -hmm. kind of understanding how how can we apply this you know these this many iterations of uh, of procedures uh, to this image and then map it to this uh, to this triangle seventy five thousand times mm -hmm. uh, so that everything coordinates. Mm -hmm. and so that's really kind of the reasoning that we're using that custom application. Okay, because you had so many panels that you know you would have <laughs> you would have broken Grasshopper or you would have broken some some other tool. Um, in terms of trying to process it and do you know as many iterations on this as you wanted to.